So Jesus, we know, in Matthew 5, 17 to 19, makes a very strong statement regarding the eternal validity of these laws, of these sayings. He says, do not even think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For very truly, I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter, not the smallest stroke of the letter shall pass away until everything is accomplished. So a very, uh, very unequivocal statement regarding the permanence of these sayings and the permanent significance they'll have in his kingdom. And then he proceeds to give us an exposition of the 10 sayings. But I wanted to close with this observation. The 10 sayings have a very important connection, I think, with the fruit of the Spirit. And it begins by understanding how Pentecost was celebrated in the time of Jesus. In the time of Jesus, Pentecost was not just a harvest festival. It was actually a celebration of the giving of the 10 sayings on Sinai. Did you know that? It was. In Jewish tradition, by, by the time of Jesus, this was already being observed. And the reason for this is, is because, of course, the Passover is recorded in Exodus 19. And, uh, I mean, no, I'm sorry, Exodus 12. And they arrive at Sinai in Exodus 19. And have you ever noticed what it says at the beginning of Exodus 19, how long it took them to get to Sinai? It was three moons, right? And, and the third month from the very day that Israel left the land of Egypt, they came to the Sinai wilderness. So people began to think about the Pentecost festival and said, you know what? That probably corresponds to about the time that Israel arrived at Sinai. Sure enough, it did. And they began to celebrate the giving of the Torah, the giving of the law, on Pentecost. Well, guess what else we celebrate on Pentecost? The outpouring of God's Spirit. Now, let's just make a couple of observations. As we already noted, in Luke's Gospel, when, when Jesus is arguing with the religious establishment about the power by which he casts out demon, he made this statement. But if I cast them out by the finger of God, which in every other Gospel account is the Holy Spirit, then what do we discover? The finger of God is what inscribed the Ten Commandments on stone in Exodus 20. And the Spirit of God is the one who inscribes them on the heart in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So there's a natural connection between the finger of God and the Holy Spirit that Jesus makes. But here's, here's the point I want to conclude with. When you look at the fruit of the Spirit that Paul enumerates in Galatians 5, you can't help but notice that the fruit of the Spirit is really the outworking of these ten sayings in our attitudes and in our actions and in our relationships with others. That what these ten sayings are really getting at are what, is what the Spirit is trying to reproduce in us as believers in Christ today. And it reminds me of this, of this memory when I was a boy, and I'll leave you with this story. When I was a boy growing up in Tampa, Florida, my friends and I, we used to go out to the orange groves and we played a game called Smash the Orange. I don't guess anybody in has ever played Smash the Orange. But there were all these oranges would fall on the ground and we would just pick them up and we'd just hit the fire out of them with baseball bats and things. And boy, the, the orange would explode and orange juice would just get all over us, all over our hands and face and we'd just lick it off and just have a great time. Or we would take an orange and we would haul off and throw it as hard as we could against a brick wall and splat! And we would just, wonderful orange juice would just rain down on us. I never encountered an orange. Um, that turned into poison because I hit it with a baseball bat or threw it against a brick wall. So that when I licked it, I was poisoned by its juice. Or one that turned into hydrochloric acid so that when I hit it, it burned my skin when it rained down on me. You see, the reason why is because the only thing that you'll ever find inside of an orange is orange juice. So no matter what you do to an orange, you squeeze it, you beat it, you throw it, you stomp it, the only thing that will ever come out is orange juice. Sweet, nourishing, Valencia, Florida orange juice. <laughs> and you know what? When you take a believer in whom the Spirit of God dwells, in whom the Spirit of God has inscribed these laws, you can do what you like. You can hit her. You can throw her down. You can burn him at the stake, and the only thing that will ever come out is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control, right? Because the only thing that you will find inside of a person filled with the Spirit is Holy Spirit fruit juice. 
Squeeze them, and out comes blessing. Hit them, and out comes love. Slam them to the ground, and out comes gentleness and self-control. See, that's the power of the ten sayings when they've been etched on the heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. If there were one thing I could change about this lectureship, it would be the subtitle. Written in stone. Oh, no, 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 not anymore. Now they're written on the tablets of the heart. Thank you, and have a great day.